بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آیت اللہ العظمى محمد تقی بہجت رضوان اللہ تعالی علیہ بان ان 1334 آف دی ہجرہ 1915 تو ا گاڈ ویری فیملی ان دی سٹی آف فومن ان دی گیلان پروونس آف ایران ہز فادر کربلائی محمد بہجت was a trustworthy and a pious personality of that region. He lost his mother when he was 16 months old. His father, Karbalai Muhammad Bahjat, fell ill when he was 16 years old. Everyone around him had lost hope. He was breathing his last moments, whence in that state hears a call saying, Leave him, let him go. He is the father of Muhammad Taqi. His mother thought he had passed away, but after a while he stood and recovered fully. A few years later, Sheikh Bahjat's father decided to get married. After having completely forgotten the incident of his falling sick and the call which he had heard then. When he was blessed with his first son, he named him Mahdi, after his old father. He was then blessed with a daughter, then with another son who he named Muhammad Hussain. He did not remember this incident except after he had been blessed with his fourth son, so he named him Muhammad Taqi. But the son fell in water and got drowned. He was blessed with another son, Shaykh's father, again named him Muhammad Taqi Athani. The second, who later became Ayatullah al-Uzma Muhammad Taqi Bahjat. Indeed, Ayatullah Bahjat was raised in the laps of a father with immense love for Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam who recited and cried for Abba Abdullah alayhis salam and the afflictions that fell on him. Ayatullah Bahjat started his religious education in 1929 at the age of 14 in his hometown Fuman. His daily program till the last days of his life started with the ziyarat of Hazrat Fatima Ma'asuma at Qom where he stood with humility and respect and recited ziyarat Ashura. He always fled from fame. His lectures were held at his house, which were later moved to Masjid Fatimi, in the neighborhood where he also led the prayers every day. Despite him teaching Dars Kharaj for many decades, he avoided becoming Marja Taqlid. His students say he possessed the sight of Barzakh. Before he entered a gathering, he recited Ya Sattar, Ya Sattar a few times, meaning, O he who conceals, O he who hides, asking the Almighty Allah to hide the false and wrong present in his creation, the Mu'mineen, on him. Ayatullah Bahjad is one of the 4,000 Urafa, known and recorded since the advent of Islam. Although not famous, but he has written many munajat in poetry. If the words of this noble man are seen, you will find one fourth of them are related to Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. Twelve hours of his day were spent in continuous worship. What joy he found in this worship no one knows. He said, if people knew what joy prayer possesses, they would find no joy better than prayer. He was content and had a simple dwelling with the maximum output. 
He slept no more than four hours a day and ate little. He was overwhelmed after performing a ziyarat. He never said, I teach or I have a lecture to deliver. But he said, a discussion, a debate and a dialogue. This noble servant of Allah never said, I have students, but said, Hambas, meaning members of my discussion group. He said, more important than praying for the relief of Imam Mahdi salam, is praying to remain and to be steadfast on Iman, is to be firm in beliefs and fundamentals and that one does not deny him when he arrives. Dying is the end of this perishable worldly life, but distancing from the correct faith is an eternal disaster and a never-ending chastisement in the hell. That is why on Laylatul Mabit, when the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam talks about the martyrdom of Amir al Mu'mineen Alayhi Salam in the sacred month of Ramadan, Amir al Mu'mineen Alayhi Salam inquires, Afi Salamatin Mindini, will my faith be firm? That is, being firm and steadfast in faith, religion is much higher than martyrdom. That is why Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam asks the Prophet, In this period of occultation, we are instructed to recite this dua a lot Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Muqallib al Qulub, Thabbit Qalbi ala Deenik. O oh Allah, O oh Merciful, O oh Compassionate, O oh Evolver of Hearts, keep my heart firm on your religion. Despite the right Shia faith, which is mentioned in the Holy Quran, due to our poor performance, it is equal to non-existence before a few, and they do not benefit from it. Regarding the glorious Quran, our reports say, La tafna ajaibu. The wonders of Qur'an are endless. The Holy Qur'an says, وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ تِبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ And we have revealed the book to you, explaining clearly everything. If one ponders deeply in these verses, one would see wonders. But we are weak. We think if we practice Qur'an, we will be afflicted. But we do not know that by practicing, many afflictions destined to us are removed. Regarding Hazrat Zahra alayha salam, he said, Did the Prophet's own child not deserve respect and care? As if the first Caliph was determined to practice and implement Haq the right, that is why he seized Fadak away from her, and he hurt her. Fatima alayha salam was from the household. For her and for the five pure members, Ayat Tathir was revealed. The Prophet said, She is Sayyidatu Nisa al Alameen. She is the chief of the women of the worlds. And elsewhere says that whosoever hurts her has indeed hurt me. How come he did not implement the rule of God on Khalid bin Walid, saying Khalid Sayfu Rasulullah? Khalid is the sword of the Apostle of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Is the sword of the Apostle of Allah more deserving, or the part of his body, the daughter of the Apostle of Allah? He said, Life in this world is only two days. Ease and comfort is in the hereafter. One nasu yatlubunahu fit dunya fala yajidunahu. If all the joys and sorrows of this world were seen in a glance, we would conclude that life here is only two days. Addahru yawman, yawmun lak, wa yawmun alayk. Life is just two days, a day in your favor and a day against you. Crying loud around someone who is dying does not benefit him 
or even those who he is leaving behind. But some quiet time repeating La ilaha illallah is beneficial for both. Maybe the departing soul with a good abode is displeased with all the crying. Our reports say a believer and a non-believer regret by the delay in their death and wish they died earlier. The Mormon, so that he is blessed and benefits from the eternal blessings awaiting him quicker, and the Kafir, so that his punishments are reduced due to his short life. A person once asked him, What do I do to seek the nearness of God? Is an Ustad required? In answer he said, Ustad is the knowledge. The teacher is a mediator. Practice that what you know. Never overlook or abandon that what you know. That is sufficient. Imam as alayhi salam has said, Man amila bima alim, warithahu Allah alma ma la yalam. One who practices that what he knows, the Almighty will teach him that what he does not know. When the najahadu fina, la nahdiyannahum subulana. And as for those who strive hard for us, we will most certainly guide them in our ways. And if it doesn't happen, know that you have not performed. And then he said, give some time to religious sciences every day. When asked for the conditions of the acceptance of dua, he said, acceptance of dua is by refraining sins. The Almighty Allah in the Holy Quran has said, Awfu ba'ahdi ufi ba'ahdikum and be faithful to your covenant with me. I will fulfill my covenant with you. Fazkuruni azkurkum. Therefore remember me and I will remember you. Udooni astajib lakum. Call upon me. I will answer you. Sometimes the betterment is in delay and at times in being changed to something better. The caller assumes his dua has not been accepted, but those with yaqeen and certainty understand. In reply to a person afflicted and surrounded with problems and in a dead end from every side, he said, Sincerely and with full faith say, Astaghfirullah a lot, until all your problems are solved. Nothing should prevent you from neglecting your religious obligations. But even after your problems are solved, continue repeating it so that they do not return. And if your problems are not solved, know that either you have not repeated or have not recited it sincerely and with full faith, and Allah is the knower. He said, A day we will be in need of the tiny and the unnoticed. A deceased once said, My deeds and actions were not accepted by the Almighty God, and was addressed, You were not cautious, the plea you did not do. In ishtihad too you were not cautious in deriving the laws. The ziyarat of Abba Abdullah with all that greatness was not accepted with an excuse that when you were a regular person, your ziyarats were like the paying of a visit by the animals. And after knowing the Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam, your ziyarat were not sincere. To safeguard your own position and title, a ziyarat was performed. The deceased said, I was condemned by all the angels from all sides, but I was given a pearl by the angels. They said, sell it. And I said, what is that? They said, on your way to Karbala, you were walking. You got tired and said, someone like me should walk. Then you thought for a while and said, Alhamdulillah. 
This pearl is that one Alhamdulillah you uttered sincerely. In brief, man must perform a variety of good tasks and actions. One must enroll himself in every good action, even though it may be as tiny as a chickpea. As a day, we will be in need of all those tiny and the unnoticed actions. Said, I think if one performs a tawaf and visits one of the sacred sites, he has indeed visited all the sacred sites worldwide and it is beneficial for him. The glorious Quran says, Bal Nay, they are alive and are provided sustenance from their Lord. They cannot be compared to anyone. We can reach them from every place. In the ziyarat of Sayyid al-Shuhada alayhi salam, salam has been sent to all the prophets, Adam, Ibrahim, Nuh, Musa, Isa and Muhammad, salawatullahi alayhim ajma'in. If one wants to cool down the heat and quench his thirst, ziyarat to one of the sacred sites is like meeting the unseen Imam. They are present and watch everywhere. Intending one of them is like intending all of them, and visiting one of them is like visiting all of them. Furthermore, they have said, You correct yourselves, and we will come after you, and it is not necessary for you to seek us. The other way is by tawassul and seeking the Holy Quran. Ahlul Bayt are the partners of Qur'an, but they are Qur'an themselves. Although the majority of the Muslims believe in the Holy Qur'an and deny the Imamats of Ahlul Bayt السلام, it's not amazing at all, as most of the religious people in the world are Christians and believe Qur'an to be void. Therefore, majority does not mean that they are better. Seeking Qur'an gives tranquility. Another in al-mushaf ibadatun. A look at the Qur'an is worship. The same tranquility is sought by someone who looks at the Imam. Ajjalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif. He said, Qur'an is great that the Almighty has said, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ And certainly we have made the Qur'an easy for remembrance. With the immense favours the Almighty has on us, is it right that at the time of the recitation of the Holy Qur'an, we pay no attention to it? We do not ponder or, God forbid, are tired like those who have no faith in the Holy Qur'an. We just suffice to its verses uttered by the tongue. Whence regarding the Holy Qur'an, Ma'asum says, Ana jali suman dhakarani. I am the companion of one who remembers me. Qur'an has been made available for remembrance. One who seeks remembrance through Qur'an remembers the glorious God. It's like two persons talking to each other. It's a great honor, but we take no notice of it. The favors and blessings bestowed upon us were never given to any nation. The special favors to us were not available to them at all. Ayatullah al-Uzma Bahjat was blessed by the Almighty Allah with 20 special favors. One of them 
if he wished he could see behind his head. He was da'im al-dhikr, meaning he constantly remembered and recited the various recitals at all times. He thought and spoke, but little and precise. He never disclosed the ranks that he possessed. He said, the Imam of time, Ajjalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif is Aynullahin nadhira wa udhunuhu al-sami'ah wa lisanuhu al-natiq wa yaduhu al-basita He is the watchful eye of the Almighty Allah, His hearing ear, His speaking tongue and His providing hands. In meeting the Imam, being face to face or meeting him in person is not necessary, no matter where he is. May that be in Aradheen as Sufla, Samawat as Sabah, Wama fi Hinna Wama Bainahun, on these low lands or in the seven skies or between them, he supervises all, no matter where he may be. We are drowning in this worldly life. To reach our destination safe, we must seek help from the Waliyullah, Imam Al-Asr, Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. Faith and the light of awareness has vanished from the hearts. Make a heart flourished with Iman and remembrance of the Almighty Allah, so that it could be signed and certified that Imam Al-Asr exists therein. He wants associates that are all for him, in the way of Allah and for Allah, not after having their own personal matters fulfilled through him. If we practice all that is certain in religion, and when going to bed and while accounting for the day, we will know that from which of our actions was Imam al-Asr pleased, and from which of them he was certainly hurt. Despite him being ghaib and unseen, and although we do send our salams, though very faint and weak to him, but we know for sure from which of our actions is he satisfied and from which of them he is displeased. Imam, no matter where he is, is khazra, green. The heart of a mu'min is jazira khazra, green island. Imam al-Asr has a mosque in the heart of every Shia. خدا ارتباط نداشته باشیم با نماینده های خدا ارتباط نداشته باشیم کارمان درست نمیشه امروز تا فردا تا پس فردا از خدا بخواهیم برسان صاحب کار را با او باشیم حالا اگر رسون که رسون اگر نرسون دور نریم ازش از رضای او دور نریم او میبیند او میداند حرفایی که ما به هم دیگه میزنیم او دلوتر عین الله ناظره و اذنه الواعیه او دلوتر از ما ها میشنود هر هم دیگر The pure soul of the great mentor of all mystics the godly alim the true jurist the marja taqlid of the shias of the world ayatullah al-azma muhammad taqi bahjat ascended to the heavens on May 17, 2009.
مسجا قدا منا عبدو که و ابن عبدی که و ابن امتی که نزل به عز قدس جلال که موحدا معتقدا مؤمنا عارفا عابدا زاهدا سالکا سائنا لنفسه مطیعا لعمر مولا تاركاً لها اللهم إنا لا نعلم منه إلا خيرا فأنت أعلم به منا اللهم إن كان محسنا فزد في إحسانه فإن كان مسيئا كما لا نعلم فتجاوز عن سيئاته إنك رؤوف رهيب إنك على كل شيء قدير ببعد إجابتي حقيق بجديد Allahumma salli wa sallim